Good morning. Welcome back to my channel, The Broken Hearted Homesteader. So glad to be able to spend some time with you guys this morning. This is take two of shooting this video because as you can see, I have been crying and I've been crying happy tears. I've been counting blessings and being overwhelmed with how great and how blessed I am. So I'm sitting here in Texas and how I got to Texas is a pretty big miracle in and of itself. So that's what I want to share with you if I can stop crying long enough. But we came to Texas because my niece, who has always been like a daughter to me, is graduating university today. So today we will celebrate her hard, hard work. But before I, before I break down and cry, cry again and not be able to do the video, thinking about how wonderful it is to be here, I need to be able to get out the story that I want to share with you because it's so amazing. So we arrived in Texas yesterday. We got up at three in the morning yesterday, me and my kids, and we got on a plane and we came here to Texas. And if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that I have preached again and again, faith over fear and not letting fear win in your life. And yesterday I got the chance to practice what I preach. And I have been saying to myself over and over and over again for months now, the belief that I hold that perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. It's a quote from the Bible and I believe it to be truth. No matter what form you believe, I believe that that is true. Perfect love casts out fear, no matter what. You can do things that scare you to death out of love. You can. I got on that plane yesterday because I love. I love these people. These are my people. And there's no way I was going to let fear win this race. Win. And I wouldn't be here for my niece to see her walk that line today. But it wasn't easy. It's easy to say perfect love casts out fear. Okay, good. But you still have to get through the fear. The fear doesn't just go away. Okay. So how did I get on that plane? Being so scared and so worried that my PTSD was going to act up on that plane and there was going to be nothing I could do about it. I would just be trapped inside this tiny little space with very minimal window coverage with so many people. How on earth was I going to handle that for two and a half hours? But I knew because it has been my experience that if you break down moments of fear into small portions, that you can get through it and love will get you through it. So it was just baby step after baby step 
let's get to the airport. Let's get to the, the turn, the gate. Let's get to the terminal. And I got on the, on the plane and I was waiting for my kids because, uh, three of my, I have, I have, uh, my son, my daughter and my, my son's, uh, my daughter in love, my son's girlfriend who I love to pieces. So all three of them were coming with me. And so Emma is only 11. And because I was a wheelchair assist, I was wheeled to right onto the plane. <clears throat> but only one of my kids could come with me. And we needed to then, we were hoping to be able to save the seats for my other kids um, to come and join us. So I got on the plane, Emma and I got on the plane and we were trying to like spread our stuff out and save these seats close to the front of the plane, which, you know, is iffy. Maybe I should have done it. Maybe we shouldn't have. Um, but I knew that I needed them with me as I tried to get through this two and a half hour flight. So we're trying to save the seats. And the stewardess is saying, you know, over the loudspeaker, this is going to be a full flight. Everybody find a seat, find a seat. And all these people are piling by us and they want those empty seats. They don't understand why we are saving seats. So we have to just keep telling people, no, these seats are taken. No, these seats are taken. And all these people are like not real happy because they would like to sit in the front of the plane too. And I get it. And this one lady comes on the plane <laughs> and her name is Stacy. And she is beautiful. And you, you can just tell that she comes from a world where people don't, she normally gets what she wants. Okay. She has money. She has, she, she's just used to getting her way. And she, so she comes and she stops. She's like, really, you need every one of those seats. And I said, well, right now I do. <laughs> and so right in front of us, there was a seat in the middle that was available. And she said, fine, I guess I'm going to have to sit in the middle. And she was annoyed, so annoyed with me that I was blocking her from all these seats that are there waiting for us. Okay. And so all the people keep piling by me, piling by me. And finally I turned to the lady and I said, you know what? We are going to have one extra seat in our row. So what about if you sit on the aisle and then my daughter can sit on the window and I'll sit in the middle <clears throat> in our row. <clears throat> and then on the other side, my son and, and my daughter in love can sit over there. And so she was happy, much happier about that to have the aisle. And so she sat down, she was still a little bit huffy and a little bit upset that, you know, like I'm saving all these seats and I'm annoying the crap out of her. So she sits down and <clears throat> we just get talking and I'm trying hard to like not have a panic attack and not absolutely lose it on the airplane. And all these people are filing in and my panic is mounting and I'm, I'm, I can feel the pressure rising and the fear rising. And all of a sudden she said something to me and I don't even know what she said but it started a conversation and we got talking and she started sharing she's coming to Texas too and she's coming to be with her family and some of the life events and the the challenges that her family has gone through in the last year and they're big hard challenges and this woman in all appearances has everything on the outside but inside she was hurting and we started talking and we have some things in common. Our sons are almost the same age and um, it turned out that she flies to Texas all the time for her family. She flies around everywhere all the time because that's her lifestyle and that's great. And so somewhere along the lines, we went from being 
annoyances to each other to actually enjoying each other's company and that woman her name is Stacy by the way I don't know if I mentioned that she was a lifesaver to me <laughs> she ended up being an angel in disguise and I still had moments lots of moments of panic lots of times when I wasn't really sure how I was going to not have a heart attack on that plane. But Stacy just kept saying, we're going to get you through this. We're going to get you through this. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And she was so great. And she like helped us find the Wi-Fi and figure out how to watch movies. And I mean, she was amazing, amazing, this wonderful woman. And so when it came time to land, the landing was so hard, the pilot just flew into that airport. And that was what I wanted too, but the getting through it was still so hard as the plane is coming in so fast and I'm so scared. And the panic is trying to overwhelm me and I'm not gonna lose it in the middle of the plane. I'm trying, you know, like, and she's talking to me and I'm breathing and is we anyway, we got through it and I said to her, I said, when are you going back? And she said, oh, I'm going back Monday morning. When are you going back? I said, I'm going back Monday morning. So now I said, oh, I get to be on the plane first because I'm a wheelchair assist. How about I save your seat? We try for the same row and I'll save you a seat. And then I will really legitimately be able to say all these seats are taken when everybody comes in. So now, not only did I make a, a great friend and God sent me an angel to get me through that flight, but now I have something to look forward to for her to be with me on the flight back on Monday. So who knows if it will actually work out that we'll get to sit together on Monday. But it's just a huge, amazing blessing, amazing thing that happened to me when I chose, again, as is my life now, to live in a way where perfect love casts out fear. We can always, always give in to the fear. Last night we were having a conversation and I was confronted with, well, what are you gonna do? Is that fair to your kids if you're gonna re reject medical advice? And you're not gonna, you're not gonna um, sustain your life medically. Is that fair to your kids? Is that fair to your son? Having to watch you suffer. And you know what? I think that comes from a place of fear. And I just don't have that fear. I don't want to live that way. I want to live as I as I told the person that I was talking to, I don't live that way. I live every moment the best I can. In the moment, I try to stay in the moment and have make great memories with my kids and they will be fine. I want to give them <clears throat> the tools that I can give them while I'm here. We're not guaranteed a second, we're not guaranteed a day. So I prefer to live my life enjoying and counting every blessing I have. I am at this amazingly humongous, gorgeous house on the lake and I'm sleeping outside in my hammock. It's 60 degrees outside. It's gorgeous. The birds are singing. Today, I will get to watch my niece walk the line. I get to be with my sister, my other nieces. I got to meet my my niece has um, a two-year-old that I have not met, Avi, and she is amazing. And I haven't met her until yesterday. Count the blessings, count the blessings. Last night, I, I met my niece's uncle from her other side of her family. That's been so unbelievably important and amazing in her life. And to wrap my arms around him, and his partner is just so amazing. Like, 
just to be here and, and live in the moment. And I'm not going to let fear win. I'm not going to let fear ruin those moments. And I kind of went to bed last night and I was a little bit like feeling off. I felt off and I didn't have the peace that I want to live in. But it's because fear started to get in there. Oh, maybe I am doing something wrong as far as my kids go. You know, maybe I should be more concerned about trying to stay here as long as possible on this planet. But, and it took me quite a bit of time in the night. I wrestled with it in the night. But I still stand by my perfect love casts out fear. And I'm going to just try my best to live in that perfect love every moment I have. I can't, I can't worry about when the end is going to come for me. I've already died twice. I am living on way borrowed time here. And I just want every second of it to be full of love and peace and joy. And that's what I want to focus on. So that's the whole message, I guess, of this weekend is count your blessings because there are so many, even if your life is, is hard. In that van, when I was holding onto the steering wheel, there were still blessings. I still had a roof over my head. I wasn't, I didn't starve to death. There's still blessings. There's always blessings. But a lot of times there's way more blessings than we even take the time to notice. So that's the theme of this weekend. I'm going to count my blessings every single second, every hug that I can give to the people that I love that I don't get to see very often. Every second that I can sit around and play stupid games with people that I love and just be with them. Cleaning up dinner last night. Just stuff that we take for granted but these are memories and moments that we make that are the only thing really that we we have that's what counts that's what that's what it's all about and if you can make those memories my my daughter said yesterday she said something about oh my mom doesn't really have any friends what are you talking about i have friends i have so many friends and i have all of you guys on youtube and I get to share my life with. I am so blessed. What are you talking about? I'm so blessed and so grateful. And even if I just had one friend, even if I, if I, I just had you guys, that would totally be enough to be able to share and count blessings with you it would be great. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just counting my blessings. So I'm going to stop babbling along here. I'm going to turn you around and let you enjoy the sun on the lake for a minute. And then I have got to go get some coffee. I've had my cry for the day. Probably lots more tears will be coming today as I, um, as I observe my niece's graduation. But they'll be happy tears and I don't mind crying them. So here we go. Let's spin around count your blessings today. Count your blessings. You've got them. I promise you do. Count them. Here we go. Lots of love to you all.